Hi, this is Frankie from AA Dental Design, and today we're going to be talking about aesthetic digital wax ups using the InLab 15 and the MCX5. In our laboratory, when cases come in that uh, doctors want wax ups, uh, no matter if it's coming in through Sarah Connect or if it's conventional uh, impressions, uh, everything is basically processed through the InLab 15. In our laboratory, we also have a printer. Uh, with the printer, most of the cases they come Sarah Connect. We actually print out the models and we prep the models uh, for processing. So that way we can just rescan it um, and start our wax ups. Once we design them, uh, we export them to our CAM software and we mill it using the MCX5. But with our conventional stuff, uh, we actually have the, our models. So the doctor sends us his pre-op models. Uh, once he sends us his pre-op models, uh, we actually prep them and scan them with the INEOS X5. Once they're designed, we export it to our CAM software and uh, we, we use uh, the Harvest White Wax to mill out most of our aesthetic wax up. We really like it. It's a, it's a pretty sturdy uh, a wax, but yet um, you can actually carve to it if you want to add your own flavor to it. There's also add-on wax if you want to add uh, some wax to it or, or even do cutbacks. And once you do the cutbacks, you can actually add some different colored wax to uh, make things look really pretty. But at the end, this process for our laboratory, um, it's, it's, it just makes the process a lot faster. As many know, our laboratory is five and, and we, we can handle a lot of different cases that come in. Uh, by using the in-lab system. For those of you who have come by my laboratory, uh, you kind of see our process. So so I was told we have about an hour, so I need to uh, get to designing a case. Uh, like I said, I want to show the process after everything is scanned, after everything is prepped. For me, uh, it, it's very important for me to just show uh, my process and how I design cases like this. So, so when we have a our case, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click on bridge restorations. I prefer to do them as a bridge instead of single units sometimes. Sometimes if I want to show some really nice embrasures and stuff like that and I really don't want to work on the case too much, I'll click, uh, I'll, I'll use them as single units instead of uh, a bridge. Um, and especially if I'm doing a bridge, my connectors, uh, the connectors that I choose are always intersection. Um, I think that the, it actually looks nicer when it mills out um, and it's a lot easier to handle. At the end of this, uh, this design phase, I'm just going to show you a couple pictures of uh, different cases that, that we've done, um, you know, whether or not they're single or, uh, or, or full bridge. Like I said, uh, it's kind of your preference. Sometimes if it's single, it's kind of like a, a jigsaw puzzle. So uh, when it's a full, when it's a, a, just one connected bridge, then it makes life a little bit easier sometimes when you're going to process the case at the end after it's milled. So we'll move on to the next step. I click on model. Uh, this is something, I mean, if, again, if somebody wants to ask me a question about why I do this, you, know, you can definitely ask me uh, at the end here. But uh, I'll set my uh, model axis. I mean, again, the way that I set my model axis is a little bit different than most. Uh, to me, it, it solves a couple little issues that, that come across once you're designing the case. I always uh, tilt my model a little bit um, instead of just setting it uh, according to the lines that you see there. So I just normally tilt it so I can see all the margins or at least I give a an angle where I can see most of the margins on all the different preps. So after I do that, I click on the edit jawline. And then Once we get to the next step, there you go, uh, we, we edit our jawlines. Now, I'm setting this up in a way where um, all these dots are representing the initial arch position for the bio jaw function. There are seven blue dots. The last blue dot at the end of the arch, I set them on the distal of the last molars. The rest of the dots I set them between 14 and 13, 11 and 12, 8 and 9, 6 and 7, I'm sorry, 6 and 5, and 4 and 3. Then the blue numbers go over each prep. Those blue numbers 
we'll tell the software where to auto trim. Okay. Now, once I'm done, move on to the next stage. So now uh, we take our case. Now that each one has a the auto trim, okay, we'll move forward and uh, start choosing our margins. Now, normally when I'm choosing margins for uh, any wax ups that I do, I usually click on manual, and then it just makes my life a little bit easier when I do it that way. So because I'm trying to pick my margin sort of where the tissue and the tooth, um, well, where I prepped that actual tooth, uh, I'm just going to make a circle. Now, this is kind of important, especially when you're trying to do um, cases that, let's say, you want to virtually see and maybe print out a model. Or, um, and I'll show that in, in a little bit, you know, what, what actually uh, could happen. Um, but what happens is, is that if you, if you cross your margins, uh, then when you try to virtually seat your case, it will actually uh, give you an error. It won't, it won't allow you. So then you have to try to find the margin that is uh, overlapping each other. So uh, I'm going to try to do this part as, as fast as I can. Um, you know, like I said, I only have an hour. I don't even know how, how far into this I am right now. But uh, it's always interesting to sit here and talk to a computer. You know, you, you're just talking and designing and talking, especially in a case like this. You know, I've done a couple of webinars where, you know, you, you kind of lose track of, of time. I remember one time I did a, a webinar where, you know, my wife, well, now me and Allison are married, so... I can say that my wife, even though I've considered her my wife for the past uh, 11 years. But moving forward, uh, one day she, I was doing a webinar and she dropped a pan on the floor. And so I had to, uh, you know, I lost track of where I was at. So sometimes when you're prepping, if you look at this little area over here, um, you know, it, it, it kind of causes these weird sections. But again, because this is just wax that's going to go over these models. I don't really pay too much attention to those the sections right there. You know, I'll just keep moving on and uh, continue picking my margins. Like I said, always use manual when you're doing these kind of cases because it will just make your life easier um, instead of auto choosing your margins and then going back and uh, fixing it. So, all right. Get that little area there. Once you, what you'll notice too is when, when you mill these out uh, in wax and you put it onto the model, um, you know, again, it's you just want to try to pick these margins where there's not too many <laughs> undercuts or anything like that because, you know, I definitely am not a, a dentist. I've never prepped an actual, um, you know, patient, but on a model, psh, I'm a stud. All right. So I, hopefully I finish this quickly so that I, I just don't start rambling on forever. Uh -huh. All right. And hopefully I'm not uh, um, crossing. Oh, I still got five more. All right. So hopefully I'm not overlapping any of my margins, but you know we'll we'll find we'll find out eventually. All right. So just finish these up. Again, if you've never done a webinar, you know, these are always the, uh, the moments because there's that process. You can't get around doing a case like this if you don't pick the margins. So after this, I only have three more. I turned off my phone, but all I hear is boom. Now, the next three. All right. 
go down the home stretch here. I wish there was a magic button that I would just click on it and my margins would be picked. Last two. All right. Let me change that to make it a little bit closer. Because the next step, manual. And finally, you get to the last one. Oh, let me clean this little section here real quick. Perfecto. All right. And last one. Oh, wait. Let me look at here. Like I said, you definitely don't want to cross over these lines, especially depending on what you want to do. If you're going to virtually seat these cases, you want to make sure that nothing is crossed. And so uh, I'm going to show you how to virtually seat in a little bit. And I'll definitely double check what I did, but I want to um, go on to the next steps, which is um, getting into the bio jaw section here. Talk a little bit about that. All right. So once I finish, you can tell my voice, I'm really concentrating in these lines. All right. Now, I have a feeling I might have overlapped, but we'll see what happens. All right. So now, let us go to, my mouse is acting up a little bit here. Um, all right, there we go. All right, we'll go to the next step. Uh, edit insertion axis. On all the cases that I do when it comes to, you know, bridges and stuff like that, this is the protocol I normally use, right? So if you take a look, you know, you kind of look for some red when it comes to your um, your, your arch there. Um, so now they're all connected. So what I'll do on every single bridge, I'll just go to the bottom and click on every single um, tooth. And the reason why I do that is because once I click on it, it sets each axis for each prep tooth. So I'll just, no matter what, this is what I do on every single case. My fits are really, really nice, especially when you're working on big cases just like this. All right, so we'll go to the next one. And again, each one, by clicking each one, it sets each axis. All right. After we do that, we double arrow forward. Normally, you already have all your parameters preset, um, but if you know if you if you're doing wax, you just it does the spacer just needs to be tight. But I mean, you're gonna I normally glue these to the models anyway, so I'll just move some little you know maybe something around uh, just so that this lights up. Apply to all. Once I highlight that, I click OK. And then I move on to the next step when it comes to uh, cases like this. Well, now because I set all those dots exactly where I want them to be, you know, my initial bio jaw setup is, is, is usually almost dead on. So I'm actually almost done with the case, especially when I get to this phase right here. Um, you definitely have all these different um, choices that you have. You have your biogeneric, you got your, your tooth database, you know, um, uh, you, if you're in the anteriors, uh, you can use uh, two shape or choose uh, different databases. Of course, you have uh, when you click on two shape, um, you have three options. When you click on database, it gives you a lot more options of different companies that uh, have a library uh, set. But normally, what I do is I use BioGeneric, and, and one of the reasons why I use BioGeneric is because I do like using the Bio Variation tool. You know, for now, I want to show how to set. You know this case up and this is again what normally i do uh, when i set up all my cases okay so my goal here is uh, each tooth is just a shell so my goal is to try to get each tooth in a position where it at least is covering up your margins as best as possible of course 
know, because uh, when we set our bio jaw and set our teeth into the positions that we want it to be, um, the shell will stay in its position, but then the actual proposal, the only thing that it actually does is look for that margin. But at least the setup that you actually um, set all your teeth are going to stay in the exact position, especially if you um, unclick the the uh, adaptive proposal. Okay, so you know when you're when you're talking about adaptive proposal, um, adaptive proposal basically means that I'm gonna you know move these teeth into a position, but I want the software uh, to take over my proposal. But if I want to override uh, the software, then I uncheck the adaptive proposal, which means wherever I position my teeth is where uh, it's going to propose. Um, again, the important part here is to make sure that all your shells are right over um, every single prep. Okay, so sometimes the margins, you know, you don't want to go over the margins too much or under the margins. You know, you want to kind of be able to position each tooth right over the margins. Okay, so again, just kind of working through the case, you you fine tune um, each individual position of the crown uh, or the tooth. You know, again, so if I wanted to group something, I can click on Control A, and it actually groups all of them. And then once all of them get grouped, then you can move them around um, as a group. So I'm just setting up all these different teeth. Using a scale tool, just making sure that um, the teeth are actually contacting each other as best as they can. You see how I'm covering up those teeth right there? I mean, I'm sorry, those preps. And like I said, all you're trying to do is position each tooth in a position where it's sitting right over those um, those preps. So, and I was debating whether or not to to just kind of do a PowerPoint um, instead of doing a real case, but I think that it's important to kind of see a real case with the software to understand you know the power of the software. So. If some of you have seen this before or have done it, well, again, I, I have to be here for an hour. <laughs> All right. But again, what's cool about the software is, I mean, you know, you think about a case this big, how long does it actually take you to wax it up? You know, I can probably set this up if, we, if we're all watching, you know, the clock right now. Um, I can do a case this big, and this is a real case, uh, to be honest with you, uh, this particular case here, uh, I actually got it from uh, Vincent, I don't know, uh, in, in Los Angeles. He has, a, he has a really nice laboratory in Beverly Hills, and so I did a training at his place, and so um, what I really liked was he actually prepped this model, and once he prepped it, he said, you know, show me how to use the software, and what would you do in a case like this, and so... Um, this happened a couple weeks ago and and like I said you know when I when I heard about this webinar I said well you know what let me use the same case so I called him up yesterday and uh, and asked him hey do you think I can use your your case for this webinar um, you know again I could have used a case that I've done like uh, many a time to kind of make things easier for 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 me at least but um, but again I want to show the power of, of what the in-lab software can actually bring to the table um, you know again uh, being able to uh, to ca to scan what the patient has um, existing right now it's always pretty cool because then I can just kind of align things I mean we want to definitely change things it was it was we want to change things around a little bit here uh, according to what she had but um, but again it's just kind of using it as a reference, not so much a, a copy, because I want to be able to get everything into position uh, to uh, to have everything propose. So again, just kind of looking at my margins as best as I can, the positioning of those teeth. 
especially on the anteriors. Straighten things out a little bit. can bring out the catalogs just kind of double checking a little bit here and there maybe bring this out slightly all right the last thing I do is I now again the teeth need to be sort of touching um, if you know if the teeth are not exactly the same you know as size at this point i mean there's different options that i can do once it, it proposes i can actually use my distance tool and uh and, and and try to measure everything and stuff like that but you know as dental tech i just want to get 90 percent there and then just you know fine tune it uh, with you know what i've been doing for years um, again you know the in-lab software is a tool it's a tool that gets us to what we want a lot faster than than hold on than to get to um you know if we're going to hand wax this you know again i just want to be close i want to get there and then if i need to you know adjust the bite once i put this on on the articulator i can definitely um adjust my bite um and this is how we handle most of our cases like i said you know we'll just uh, pull these out making sure that they're covering the uh, margins all right maybe i should have sat in a chair that doesn't squeak as much but uh, all right so again um if we were to at this point um let me just change these up just slightly all right. Sometimes you overthink things because, again, you don't want to have to sit here and uh, and hold on. Sorry about that. But when you click on the adapted tool, I mean the adapted proposal, or unclick it, like I said, if I was to click the adapted tool, I mean the adapted proposal, uh, have it highlighted, then the software would actually help with the proposal. Since it's unclicked. Um, wherever I place my these these teeth are, are wherever I, I place these shells it's exactly where they're gonna sit in my proposal um, and then the only thing that the software has to do is find a margin so it needs to attach itself to to the margin all right so let's uh, let this propose I know everybody's nervous or at least a couple of you probably thought to themselves mm, this is actually not going to you know propose but you see how I'm not even moving my mouse? I'm letting the, the computer just do its thing. No clickies. Click, click, click. It's really bad. All right. Almost. I'm going down the home stretch. And voila. All right. So now I can just kind of fine tune things a little bit. Um, position them move them around uh, if I wanted to I can also go back to the positioning tool uh, but because my proposal was really uh, exactly where I want it to be um, I'm not going to go backwards so uh, but let's say if I have a couple teeth that I need to move around I can always go back to the positioning tool once I go back to the positioning tool I just move the teeth that I want to move and then I can actually um, repropose and the teeth that I actually moved were the ones that will repropose and all the other ones will stay exactly where they are so now we're just looking for um, you know trying to fill in the areas that are too thin okay because again I just want to be 90% there um, so that way if I need to you know carve a little bit or add some wax if I wanted to I can definitely um, do that after it's milled just positioning a couple of these teeth 
into occlusion. Again, if I wanted to, I can use my virtual articulator, but if I'm scanning something off of an articulator that's already been mounted, then you know I'm just going to um, set my teeth. And if I have to make minor adjustments, especially on the articulator, I will. But I can use my virtual articulator um, just to help out the situation. Like I said, at the end, even by using my virtual articulator, most likely if I put it onto the um, my my articulator, I might might still have to adjust. So we just need to produce. Again, we get a lot of these big cases, a lot of these wax ups, and so we we just need to uh, make sure that when they come in, they go out the door. Um, so again, just kind of fine tuning little things here and there. All right. And straighten things out a little bit. Let me look at the. Uh, sounds good. All right. So one of the things that we can actually do again is um, depending on your parameters, whatever your uh, occlusion was set to, uh, you can just right click and oops, I clicked on the wrong one. Uh, you can just right click um, and pull out your. Uh, the contact tool and click on occlusion by clicking on each one if you want to um, make your life a little bit easier so I can just go through the mouth and, uh, and click that fill in the, the little thin areas but um, okay but either way you, you I think you guys you know understand what what we're talking about and like I said I only have I think a half hour left so um, what I do want to do is also show you other options that you have, but uh, kind of moving forward, you know, with the actual case, just set these teeth up according to where I want to position them for right now. So that way, when I go back to the uh, positioning tool, I don't have to work that much, but I can show you all the other functions that are available to us, right? So once you move forward, after you have the case exactly where you want it to be, then we have a couple options. One of the options that we have, as soon as it calculates, all right, one of the options that we have, of course, is to um, export to, um, to, but there's one something I do in all my cases. I always turn it around and just kind of look at the inside of my cases. So that way I know that if I have any issues with maybe a burr not being able to, you know, reach a certain area or something like that. So I always check it underneath, uh, underneath by pulling out the model and uh, turning it around. But uh, once I once I approve my design and everything looks good, then I just export it to CAM. That's one of my options. Um, let it export. I have this computer actually set up to a, um, a like another computer in the back of the laboratory. Um, so it, it takes a little bit longer than norm because it has to transfer through the network. So should be done in a couple seconds. <laughs> Maybe a couple minutes. <laughs> no, it should be done soon. All right, there you go. All right, so let's click OK. Um, the other options you definitely have is if you want to export it as an STL to a third party um, mill. OK, um, you can click there and just export it. OK, so let's cancel out of that. And then, yeah, all right. So the other option that you definitely have is, is to virtually see the case, right? So if you go back to your administration and you want to, let's say, uh, create a model and print this out, whatever you just designed, right? Uh, you click on, let me get rid of some of these. So that way they don't get in my way. Um, so you click on this icon that says virtually seating. You click on seat layer, then you click apply. So what it's going to do is it's actually going to take everything that you just designed, right? And um, and and make sure, I mean, and, and give you a virtually seated model, okay? But as I was saying earlier, if you do not check 
to make sure that your margins, okay, um, are clean, right? So at this point, I'm just going to double check all of them just to make sure nothing is overlapping. So if I see one that's overlapping, uh, there's one right there. Okay, so if I see one that's overlapping, I need to fix that because if not, it's going to give you an error. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll just go back, click on draw margin. Okay, this does not repropose your whole case. Okay, the only thing that you're doing is actually editing the, the, the margin. All right, so by me moving this little section right here, it will edit that margin. Okay, as long as you do, don't click on define the search axis, you got to be patient. Okay. Need to be patient. See how now? Now you just click on design. Once you click on design, go straight to edit restoration. So what it's going to do is it's actually just going to edit that little margin there. It's not going to repropose everything. But if you were to go step by step, let's say click next, and then all of a sudden you know touch something, and the next thing you know everything will just get repropose. Okay, depending on what you're trying to do. So if you look at that little area right there, that's all it did was just separate those two uh, a little bit better. Because again, if I was to virtually seat these, it would give you an error saying that it's it's not possible. So we'll just click on it again, seat layer, click apply. And I would definitely show you how to do a model right now, but I think I do not have time to do that. I don't know <clears throat> if maybe there will be another webinar that will show you how to do a, uh, a virtually seated model um, but this is what it would look like if you virtually seat it almost all right there you go so now that i have a virtually seated model if i want you know i can do anything i want I, uh, let's say if I wanted to uh, create this model, I would just click on uh, models, right? The upper, if I want to do the lower as well, then I can re-articulate this if I wanted to as well. Um, but for now, let's just click the upper uh, and then click OK and move forward. Okay. Since I didn't trim this model, of course, it's going to be a little bit bigger and stuff like that. But as you can see right there, you have your the case that you just designed. Well, now it's virtually seated. So now we can create this model again. If you wanted to, you can export this. Um, once you once you go through the model module in the InLab software, uh, you would go all the way to the end, and then you export as a STL. Um, and then you can just, you know, like I said, you can print it. You can send it to Infinident uh, for them to uh, send you a uh, a printed model. Okay. In our laboratory. Uh, we actually receive cases that are uh, connect cases, and we use the virtually seating uh, for implant cases that we get sent. So we'll let's say we'll create an abutment. Uh, once we create the abutment, we virtually seat that abutment, and then with the model module, um, we then create the model, and then we print out the model. Uh, let's say if we wanted to do a bridge on top of there, or we wanted to add porcelain, maybe make a coping and stuff like that. So the virtual um, uh, seating is very powerful. All right, so now let's go back and I want to show a couple different uh, functions and a, a couple different ways to handle, especially like the anteriors of your grounds and stuff like that, right? Uh, for this case, we, we originally picked uh, biogeneric, which will allow us to show um, how the virtual, I mean, I'm sorry, how the bio variation tool works. So let me just uh, go back here really quick just to triple check because I... It seems like it was an hour ago since I looked at that. Okay, so biogeneric is picked. Um, again, you have different options. You can choose um, two shape, which will give you a void, or other ones. But let's just go back to the biogeneric just to make sure uh, I highlighted it again. I'm just going to repropose everything really quick. Uh, so then that way I can show you how that function works. Um, let's say once we're setting up our case and we want to add a little bit of um, anatomy uh, to the actual case. Once we set up the teeth and everything proposes, because like I said, it will repropose if you decide to move something. 
uh, going back to what I did earlier where I just clicked on the margin, it will only redefine that margin. But because I went back and I clicked on a couple things, you know, when it comes to like, you know, picking uh, a biogeneric, well, now it's just going to repropose everything. So let me, it's almost done. Again, don't click. You should never click. Just stay away from the clicking. Because we get sometimes impatient. I get impatient. And then that's when all of a sudden your computer all of a sudden decides to, you know, and I haven't saved this. So let us move forward. Almost. All right. Perfect. All right. So especially if you want to work on your anterior cases in the front. Okay. What you're going to do is you're going to right click. You're going to hit on bio variation or bio generic var variation tool. Okay. Um, let's say, let me remove these so you guys can see this. Let's say that all of a sudden I like, you know, uh, a tooth number. I can basically choose whatever tooth number. Oh, I forgot to group them all. My bad. Sorry. Let me undo that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on control A, which will now group them all. Once everything is grouped, now we can go back to the bio variation tool or bio generic variation tool. Almost. All right. And move that to, let's say, um, I don't know, 73, 74. Let's try 73 right there. And once we let go, now you can see how now the anatomy has changed for the crowns. Um, you have a hundred different bio variation uh, numbers to choose from. So once you find one that you like for some cases or all your cases or whatever, uh, you can actually uh, do all, all your anterior crowns exactly the same way. So let it repropose, of course, because I um, changed the anatomy of the crown now. It needs to repropose. Most. All right. So once everything proposes, now you can just alter. But it's very important that if you're going to use this tool, you make sure that you use this tool right off the bat. Don't start tweaking things or anything like that. So once you propose it, once you go from the uh, bio jaw to the actual proposal, you make sure that if you're going to use that tool, use it right away. Because if not, anything that you did will be reset. The other options we have is to go through our database, right? So there's a simple one, which is basically your, you know, your, your, your two shape, which is your avoid, your square, or your um, tapered. Okay, you can choose those. I've used uh, avoid uh, many a time, um, but then you can also choose um, different databases that are uh, added to the the software. So let's just say that we want to use this one right here. Um, we click on it and move to the positioning tool. So what we'll do at this point is um, just edit restoration so that everything calculates. Okay. So that was um, the old proposal that we use. Again, every time you make any changes, uh, it will definitely um, recalculate. So you want to make sure that right off the bat, you choose which direction you're going to go. So if you want to use the bio variation tool, you definitely click on uh, on bio generic and then you move forward so that you can use that tool. But if you want to use the other um, databases, then just start that way. Again, you just definitely don't want to spend all that time working on the case. And the next thing you know, the whole thing starts to recalculate and stuff. So um, choose your path wisely. All right. So. It's almost done. So I was going to um, export this now, but I forgot I had already uh, exported it. Um, so now I want to show you what I do in the cam software, especially where I place my sprues on the anteriors. So um, let me, I already exported it earlier. So let me click on the cam on the bottom here. All right, so now with the cam software, I'm just going to add a new job. 
I'm going to use the MCX5. And click OK. Um, I exported the case already, so I'm just going to highlight it. Choose a block. I already put in there a PMMA. I'm sorry, a uh, yeah a PMMA block. I should have put a wax, but it doesn't matter. Double arrow forward. And now we're going to arrange this. You know, again, when you're doing the aesthetic wax, especially if you're going to do um, the complete arch and you're not going to do them individually, um, when you're placing your sprues, you just got to make sure. And normally what I do is I do not put any sprues on any of my anteriors because if I'm going to spend all that time, uh, you know, designing my case or even choosing databases or or uh, biogeneric variation or using the bio variation tool, then why would I put a sprue on the anterior? So um, once I place it into its position, um, I then will move forward and then it's going to set up a bunch of the uh, sprues at this stage here. But again, that is definitely overkill. <laughs> so what I normally do is I remove all the anteriors by just deleting them okay, on the facial and just get rid of those. I don't really need those and then normally the golden rule especially for me is just to use every other crown and put a, a sprue on the lingual or on the buckle um, so no, that's exactly what I do on every single one especially when they're full arches and stuff like that um, so I even removed this one I mean that's kind of useless I can I can also get rid of one of those uh, back molders if I wanted to too um, so so at this point, um, then we just move forward. You're definitely, you have, you know, three options. You have your rough mill, uh, your fine mill, and your extra fine. So at this point, you're going to choose um, the one that's going to fit uh, you. Let's say if if you're, you know, actually going to work on your case and you want to add your own flavor to it, then, I mean, why would you spend all that time milling in extra fine if you're going to change things up a little bit, right? So the best thing to do is just choose which way you want to go. Um, normally on these, I mill them out in extra fine uh, all the time. So, um, so basically that's that's the process when it comes to designing. When it, when it comes to designing cases, and you know once you uh, export it into the CAM software, you know again our laboratory does a lot of different cases uh, when it comes to um, you know wax ups, and normally we can handle. You know, big cases like this, as you notice, I just, I mean, I designed this case <laughs> about in 20 minutes, um, but I did go back and forth a couple times to show you the different uh, choices that you have. But again, you know, I can spend, uh, after I'm done with this, you know, do another case, let's say an anterior six unit. And to be honest with you, it takes me about 15 minutes just to set them all up and, and move forward. So, you know, again, I, I was thinking about this webinar and I was kind of thinking, you know, whether or not to do a PowerPoint and just kind of like do a step by step. But I wanted to show it because I do get a lot of phone calls, you know, that they say, well, you know, big cases, it, you can't handle it or or the software, you know, bogs down and stuff like that. You know, sometimes you definitely want to save. You want to click, you know, control S. Of course, you guys, you know, um, when it comes to this particular case, I had, already, I had already done it once before, so I kind of went through the same process. But you definitely always want to click, you know, save just in case. I mean, you know, it is what it is. I, I, I've gone into laboratories where, um, you know, they're working on four cases and then they, just, they, they never close them down. And the next thing you know, they pull out a full arch and then they wonder why their, their system is going really slow and stuff like that. I mean, this computer I have here that I'm using here is it, it has a, a 670 graphics card, which is, you know, uh, what I purchased from Sermona about, um, I think it was about a year, a year and a half ago, and I haven't really touched it or done anything to this particular computer. But, um, but again, that's basically the process. So what I want to do at this point is show you a couple uh, pictures of a couple cases that we've done. You know, like I said, you have the option of, uh, of doing it as a bridge altogether, um, you know, again, that is the fastest, easiest way. But sometimes, you know, if you want to spend some time and really not have to work too much, I, I do them individually. So 
Um, like here's a case that we did. Um, you know, again, we milled it out uh, with white wax. Uh, we like the harvest wax again. Uh, for us, it, it works for us really good. Um, so you can mill them out individually. But sometimes when you do them individually, then you, you set a sprue and it's on your, your facial area. You know, again, what we like about this particular wax is that I can actually um, take a stone and, and just use a, a handpiece and remove those sprues instead of using your carvers. Um, you know, like I said, it all depends on which direction you want to go. Uh, sometimes this works for us because uh, we can actually set up the a case depending on you know how we want to do it even when we do veneers sometimes if if we're just going to design veneers sometimes it is easier just to do them uh, single units but again it all depends on your abilities when it comes to to designing but uh you know they fit really nice i mean you don't really have to touch the contacts especially when you do it this way you know but the only issue is when you got a bunch of these cases here um and and you're going to be working on them and they all become, you know, single units, it becomes a jigsaw puzzle. So, um, again, it's just about choosing which direction you're going to go and how you're going to handle each individual case. So, you know, in cases like this, this is a, a full arch that we decided to um, just mill it out in one whole piece. And, um, you know, what we normally do is once we put it on there, uh, we'll add a little bit of uh, shine to it. Uh, you can choose that or it all depends, you know, if you're going to make a putty, uh, then but if this is a presentation, then you um, you can add some gloss to it. Now, you know, cases like this, like I said, Sarah Connects, uh, we get cases Sarah Connect all the time and then they just want us to do wax ups and then, you know, send it back. So if we had virtual preps, that would be awesome. Just saying, just throwing it out there. I, you know, cases like that. But one of the coolest things that we've noticed right now that we're doing is um, if a doctor says to us, you know, just send me the case that you just did and um, and print out a model, virtually seed it. Once we virtually seed it, we uh, ship it off to the, to the doctor. Well, folks, that's all she wrote. I want to thank you uh, for tuning in and, and watching this webinar. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, for those of you that stayed all the way through it, <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, if you've never tried a webinar or never tried to do one of these things, like I said, it's, it's one of the hardest things to do in my eyes. I can sit in front of, you know, a hundred people or sit in a class and, and teach a bunch of people. But when I'm sitting here looking at a computer uh, and just talking and talking, sometimes I get in my own head. I don't know. I don't know how Jay does it. Jay, Jay's pretty good at doing this kind of stuff. So uh, thank you again. So if you have any questions, uh, I'm definitely here to uh, to answer them. So thank you.